What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Lab. So today we're going to be taking another look at one of these. This is an Nvidia Quattro FX card and we're going to be asking the question, can it game? And if it can, can it still game in today's titles? So this is the Nvidia Quattro FX 4800. It's a workstation card released in 2008 and was the equivalent to the GTX 260 of its time. Even back then you probably wouldn't have used it for gaming because these would have cost an absolute fortune but in today's market you can pick them up for as little as £20. This one in particular boasts a graphics processor of the GT200B, it has 192 cores and has a memory size of 1.5GB of GDDR3. Compared to its older brother it's actually a bit of a monster. The actual cooling on this is far superior and the card itself is actually quite big. If we just take a look against its FX 3800, we can see that it's a much bigger card overall. But that doesn't actually mean that it's any more powerful. So what we want to do is obviously get it onto our test rig and see how it can actually game. Now this is going to be the first card on our new benchmarking test machine. And we're going to give it a bit of a pacing. Our new benchmarking machine means that we can actually start to do a consistent benchmark across different GPUs and that's exactly what we've done. We've got a standard set of games that we want to run it against. Some are new, some are old, but let's have a look and see how well it fared. So as you can see we've probably answered one of our questions already. That was a brand new title that was Shadow of the Tomb Raider and this card wouldn't actually start the game and that's because it is a DirectX 10 card and that game requires DirectX 11. So what we did is we switched to our older set of games and we run it through its paces on those and this is what we got.
So as you can see from those benchmarks, for a 14 year old card that wasn't designed to actually play games, it did pretty well. In the earlier titles, it managed to hold up and actually produce a 60 frames per second in 1080p high in Dirt 3, but as the stack went newer, it struggled to hold on to that kind of performance. So would you actually buy one of these for games? Probably not, not unless you're building some kind of retro machine or some kind of arcade machine, because it'd be perfect for that, being that it's so cool and quiet. But for anything else, it's probably not worth it. Now we've really enjoyed playing with this card, but we want to know what you think. So let us know in the comments, what do you think about these cards and what should we look at next? Make sure you drop a like on this video if you like the content and we'll catch you in the next one.